The readings will now be given by Elizabeth from Georgia. The Bible, 2nd Samuel. For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. Matthew. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him. And Jesus said unto them, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Luke Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning, and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants, whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth, and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. First Thessalonians for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Romans now it is high time to awake out of sleep, 
For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. 1 Corinthians Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. I will read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. Be watchful, sober, and vigilant. The way is straight and narrow, which leads to the understanding that God is the only life. It is a warfare with the flesh, in which we must conquer sin, sickness, and death, either here or hereafter, certainly before we can reach the goal of spirit or life in God. The parable of the ten virgins serves to illustrate the evil of inaction and delay. This parable is drawn from the sad history of Vesta, a little girl of eight years, who takes the most solemn vow of celibacy for thirty years and is subject to terrible torture if the lamp she tends is not replenished with oil day and night, so that the flame never expires. The moral of the parable is pointed, and the diction purely oriental. We learn from this parable that neither the cares of this world, nor the so-called pleasures or pains of material sense, are adequate to plead for the neglect of spiritual light that must be tended to keep aglow the flame of devotion, whereby to enter into the joy of divine science demonstrated. The foolish virgins had no oil in their lamps. Their way was material. Thus, they were in doubt and darkness. They heeded not their sloth, their fading warmth of action, hence the steady decline of spiritual light, until the midnight gloom upon them, they must borrow the better tended lamps of the faithful. By entering the guest chamber of truth and beholding the bridal of life and love, they would be wedded to a higher understanding of God. Each moment's fair expectancy was to behold the bridegroom, the one altogether lovely. It was midnight. Darkness profound brooded over earth's lazy sleepers. With no oil in their lamps, no spiritual illumination to look upon him whom they had pierced, they heard the shout, The bridegroom cometh. But how could they behold him? Hear that human cry. Oh, lend us your oil. Our lamps have gone out, no light. Earth's fables flee, and heaven is afar off. The door is shut. The wise virgins had no oil to spare, and they said to the foolish, Go to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. Seek truth and pursue it. It should cost you something. You are willing to pay for error and receive nothing in return. But if you pay the price of truth, you shall receive all. I pray that all my students shall have their lamps trimmed and burning at the noon of night, that not one of them be found borrowing oil and seeking light from matter instead of spirit, or at work erroneously thus shutting out spiritual light. Such an error and loss will be quickly learned when the door is shut. 
Error giveth no light, and it closes the door on itself. Christian scientists cannot watch too sedulously, or bar their doors too closely, or pray to God too fervently for deliverance from the claims of evil. Thus doing, scientists will silence evil suggestions, uncover their methods, and stop their hidden influence upon the lives of mortals. Rest assured that God in His wisdom will test all mankind on all questions, and then, if found faithful, He will deliver us from temptation and show us the powerlessness of evil, even its utter nothingness. Pray without ceasing. Watch diligently. Never desert the post of spiritual observation and self-examination. Strive for self-abnegation, justice, meekness, mercy purity, love. Let your light reflect light. Light is a symbol of mind, of life, truth, and love, and not a vitalizing property of matter. Science reveals only one mind, and this one shining by its own light and governing the universe including man, in perfect harmony. This light is not from the sun, nor from volcanic flames, but it is the revelation of truth and of spiritual ideas. This also shows that there is no place where God's light is not seen, since truth, life, and love fill immensity and are ever-present. Day, the irradiance of life. Light, the spiritual idea of truth and love. The objects of time and sense disappear in the illumination of spiritual understanding, and mind measures time according to the good that is unfolded. This unfolding is God's day, and there shall be no night there. It is wise to be willing to wait on God, and to be wiser than serpents, to hate no man, to love one's enemy, and to square account with each passing hour. Patience and resignation are the pillars of peace that, like the sun beneath the horizon, cheer the heart susceptible of light with promised joy. Be faithful at the temple gate of conscience. Wakefully guard it. Then thou wilt know when the thief cometh.